What's up guys, it's frog for doc and this is a MacBook, but this isn't just any old MacBook. Okay, well maybe it is. This is an M1 MacBook Pro, but what makes this guy special is the fact that I bought this from Facebook Marketplace for only 250 Australian dollars. Now you might be thinking, gee, if you only paid 250 bucks for this, surely there's something wrong with it, right? Well, yeah, kinda. But that's exactly what today's video is about. We're going to be taking this laptop and fixing all the problems with it. But before we do that, I need to fix this segue to our sponsor. Are you currently running out of storage and need a simple way to store all of your files? Well, this video is sponsored by Ugreen and their product, the NASSYNC DH2300. This is a simple, easy to use two bay NAS, which allows you to store up to 60 terabytes of files. That's around 20 million pictures or about 40,000 movies all stored locally. Instead of paying for endless subscriptions to store all your files in the cloud, which is really just some random data center in a another country, you can instead make a single purchase and store all of your files locally and securely without any prying eyes from big tech corporations. And compared to other NAS systems, which can be quite complicated to set up, the Ugreen NAS is beginner friendly. You just simply install your drives by sliding them into the top of the system. Then follow the step-by-step -step instructions to get your NAS up and running within 10 minutes. It has some other cool little features too. For example, your iPhone album can be backed up or automatically as well, along with any time machine backups from your Mac, meaning you don't need to worry about any data loss. It's equipped with a 1 gigabit ethernet port, and with speeds of up to 125 megabytes per second, it can transfer a 1 gig file in just several seconds. And also, the Ugreen NAS supports NFC, so you can tap your device on the front and start sharing files right away, and then easily access the files on any of your devices, even TVs too. You can also set up different accounts for your family or friends, with different access permissions too. The Ugreen NAS offers a wide compatibility for third-party hard drives, and you can also configure RAID redundancy, which uses the second drive as a backup, meaning that in the event of a drive failure, you won't lose any data. So if you're looking for a simple and easy storage solution, be sure to check out the Ugreen NAS to get 20% off during Black Friday until the 1st of December, using the link in the description below. I went on Facebook Marketplace and I bought this. Apple. Pretty much everything about this computer works, except for the keyboard. Well, the keyboard does work, it's just that some of the keys are a bit sticky. I don't really know the best way I'll be able to show this, but that's the enter key working, and then if I press the shift key, yeah, look how slowly that comes up. That shift key especially is very bad. So some of the keys are a little bit sticky because apparently some liquid was spilt on here. Here's hoping that it won't lead to any future issues, but for now, we're going to be fixing the keyboard. And that's pretty much what this video is about. Me showing you my $250 purchase, me cleaning up the keyboard, and then me flipping this on Facebook Marketplace for a profit. To begin our repair, we're going to need the silicone mat. And now we need to remove several keys from this MacBook Pro in order to really get in here and start cleaning things up. So we need to figure out which keys are bad. So everything here seems to work. It's pretty much just, uh, these feel okay. Enter doesn't feel too bad. This one was sticky before, but it's actually feeling not too bad now. This shift key is terrible. These arrow keys are pretty bad. Left and right is fine. Up and down is nasty. These need to be done. Apart from that, every other key seems to be working just fine. Okay, so I was watching a tutorial on YouTube and they suggest playing card, toothpick. So we're going to try that and see just how far we can get with this. These are some really thick toothpicks, jeez. How does anyone get that between their teeth? I mean, maybe if you're British, but that's besides the point. <sighs> and I already know this is going to be painful because longer keys on keyboards are notoriously hard to remove. So let's begin the agony. You're not going to hear me very well because I have to go nice and low so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. So we got to slide this in like so, and we need to get my toothpick in. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the keycap and I'm taking the support beam and I'm just shoving the toothpick between and splitting them apart. My camera mount never likes these angles so we'll see how well it wants to cooperate today. Just kind of getting that in and we're splitting this apart. 
Okay, I'm hoping I didn't break any bits there. It looks okay. And we can definitely... Oh, yeah, look at that sticky. Look at the sticky! Ugh, oh, dear. No wonder why it's so dirty. We're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol to really get in there and clean this gunk up. Okay, now we gotta do the arrow keys. We're just getting a card under here and we're pushing down on the left side of the key and we're prying up the right. And now we gotta do just a little bit of magic. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, oh, we kind of got that off a little bit wrong. Oh, these are just clips, so I should just be able to pop it off. I'm not worried too much about it. There we go. Yeah, you can see that these two here are just grabby clips, so they're pretty easy to just rip off. You don't want to rip off these hook clips here because they go above it and if you pull it, it'll just snap it and completely obliterate it. So we actually did a good job on that one. And yeah, you can see the gunk that's causing it to stick. And you can just see it there, it's going pretty bad. Although that being said, I might have stuffed up the scissor switch mechanism a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look closely at this because I think I might have stuffed this up. There's a little hook thing there and I think I might have popped that out. So I mean, I could probably pop that back in, but we're in the danger zone right now. Oh, uh-oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh no. Well, now the scissor switch itself has come apart. I don't think anything looks broken. So I should be able to just click it back in, but yeah, now I'm starting to swap things around and this is where things can get bad real quick. But now we need to basically do the same for this side and let's not break it this time. This is how it sits, okay? It's dirty, but this is how it sits. Of course, with these actually connected together. I'm gonna get all the angles I can. I can see how I've stuffed this up. Since these are on the little alligator clips, we can just pop them out. Now comes the part where I clean the laptop and then we're going to put it back together. Alrighty, -o. we're gonna get some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to just start cleaning it with a toothbrush. Oh yeah. If you're wondering if the IPA will harm the computer, that'll be no. You can use isopropyl alcohol with the computer and it'll be just fine. Now let's brush it like we're brushing our teeth. I don't know if that's really the method, but we really gotta get in there and clean the gunk out. Hell, even this thing wants to come out. Sure, why not? You've already come out, so. Good to you, buddy. It can have some isopropyl alcohol as a treat. Not even as a treat, it can have a lot of it. And it'll be nice and clean at the end of it. That's clean. I just need to figure out how to reassemble these guys right here because I have messed up the switches on here or they've just kind of fallen apart on me. So I gotta fix this up. These two are pretty much ready to go. I just need to put their bars back in after I give those a quick little clean. But yeah, we should be ready to go with this computer. Okay, so I have made some progress in fixing these up. Since this one never fell apart, I simply copied it and slotted the two scissor switches back together. So hopefully this can be fixed. As for the return and shift keys, this is pretty much as simple as just putting the scissor switch mechanism back in. Then I think we could just simply take this guy, pull this out and then slot it back in somehow. Yeah, okay. Well, let's try this again, this time actually using the tutorial. You can see on the left side there, I'm gonna have to put this little thing under that hook there. May take a little bit to get this right because it's finicky shit. Damn it. <laughs> uh, this is gonna take several attempts. It's so close to being right. This side feels fine, this side doesn't. Oh my god, it's perfect. I did a perfect shift key. No way. Look at that. They're the same. The center key's a bit weird though, but the shift key is perfect. Mm, that's the problem. There's one side lifting, but the other side isn't. I can't really see how it's meant to be. Well, unfortunately, I have broken off the two little clips that actually hold these two together and now these will not work. So I'm gonna have to buy a replacement. Ugh, we still have one more switch that is somewhat intact that we can use so we can at least try and get one more of the keys on. 
and then we're gonna have to order a replacement switch which should be fine it's only about eight bucks off ebay but still it's kind of annoying either way let's give this a shot that is acting like this is a switch both sides are going up this time and not just one there we go Yes! Okay, we got the key on. And that's as much as we can do because we have to buy a new scissor switch. So I'm gonna have to order that and then wait however long it'll take for eBay to ship the damn thing here. And then once it's here, we can finish the assembly of the keyboard. <sighs> okay, so it's been nearly a month since our last segment and this has finally arrived. Two replacement scissor switches for this computer. I'm pretty sure I only ordered one, so I'm kind of glad they gave me two in case I screw this up, which is likely. So let's fix this damn thing once and for all. I have the key here. I have one half of the old switch here. I don't even know where the other half has gone, but it really doesn't matter at this point. This is the part that actually matters. So let's get to repairing this thing and it's still on. It's literally been a month and the battery's still going, which is kind of cool because my M1 MacBook Pro can't do this. So clearly the battery life is significantly better on this machine. Okay, let's get one of our little goobers out and let's see if we can put the switch back in. Now I do kind of forget which orientation it's meant to be in, but I guess we'll figure that out in just a moment. So after watching the video back, it goes in this way because this bit here with these two little Audi bits is what goes up. Therefore, it sits in that way. I know you guys will barely be able to see anything, but like it's really hard to film small stuff like this. I mean, I suppose you would hook this under here like so. Kind of push that forwards. And then, yes, yes, I think we got it. Hold on, I'll need a little card to verify this. Okay, so theoretically, if I take this card right here and I slot it into here, oh, that's in. Notice how both sides are lifting up? That is exactly what we want, and we'll actually need that, crucially, for the reinstallation of the key. That is good. That's good. Okay. Oh, that's where the other half of the switch is. Yeah, it's still in here. Although this is a handy little thing. So it's an up arrow, and that bit goes in there. Yeah, I've definitely got it on the right way. Oops. You can tell that this end is a hook, so this like slides under there and it's like held in just by physics. And then this actually clicks in like those little Lego hands, those little Lego uh, things. So pretty much we have to hook this side on and then clip this side on. So pretty much the tutorial says this is simple. You just slot this guy in, a little card or whatever. He was using a toothpick in the video, which I think was stupid. Now we basically just hook this guy on like so, remove that, press down, and it's done. It feels perfect. It's not sticky, it's not uneven, it's done. And just like that, fine folks, the arrow keys are all done, all these keys are done and they feel good. The only thing that doesn't feel very good is the return key, but that feels honestly fine. Everything works perfectly and this computer is now ready to resell and it's in basically perfect condition. It's a little dirty, it's a little dusty, the metal's a little bit discolored in some places, but this has been a successful repair and I only paid 250 bucks for it. That's crazy. Here is our fully repaired M1 MacBook Pro. Yes, thanks for making the noise. It's still a little bit dirty inside of the hinge. The rubber on the outside still sticks to the bottom of the casing. But other than that, everything works perfectly fine on this machine. Even though the previous owner said that liquid had spilled onto this thing and there were some other issues. Getting this machine for only 250 bucks is such a good deal. And obviously so, because these machines are typically worth around 700 bucks on the used market. And even for 700 bucks, there's not really a better machine that you can buy in terms of used laptops. Even these first generation M1 MacBook Pros have amazing battery life. 
amazing performance. The only thing that really holds these machines back is the fact that most of what you'll find on the used market are the base models with only 8 gigs of RAM which kind of sucks. But I mean if you shell out some extra cash you can find ones with 16 gigs of RAM or even 512 gigs of storage and those ones will last you for years even today. These are already 5 year old machines with plenty of life ahead of them. So you didn't need me to tell you all of that, you would have heard the same sentiment spread across the entire YouTube tech community. However, an aspect of this machine that isn't universally agreed on by everyone in the tech community is the touch bar. There exists only two types of people on the planet, those who love the touch bar and those who are wrong. Okay, all jokes aside, I do get why people would be upset about the removal of function keys. At the same time, the replacement was perfectly fine for them. I will say though, the way it was originally implemented where they removed the escape key as well was absolutely ridiculous, but by the time we got to the M1 model MacBooks with the fixed scissor switch keys, thank god Apple got rid of Butterfly, they brought back the escape key, making the touch bar much better. And honestly, I love the touch bar, I love being able to hold here and just change the volume like that, it feels really natural. And it just kind of sucks that it wasn't fully utilised in a lot of apps, because it had so much potential. I've literally composed entire songs using the touch bar on Logic Pro. I mean, that is probably the app that takes the most advantage of the touch bar. Let's bring out my personal M1 MacBook Pro. This is my laptop daily driver, it's basically the same thing but with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And I picked this one up for only 650 Australian bucks, I don't know how I keep finding these things for so cheap. This song here was composed entirely with the touch bar, with the exception of the drum machine. But hey guess what, if we go into here and then tap this we can actually test out the drum machine. Now it is meant to have icons of the pieces of the drum kit on here but it's just showing the notes but it achieves the same effect. Probably my favourite use of the touch bar is using it as its own MIDI keyboard. Sometimes if I'm out travelling and I don't have my MIDI keyboard with me I can just compose songs using this and then you can lock it into a scale. So I'm pretty sure this song's key was actually D sharp minor and now it's locked into a scale. So basically I just put an ARP on this instrument, lock it into a key, and then I slide around on here. Which is why this song is called Sliders. Because the song is literally composed just from me sliding around on the touch bar. Look, you can see what I was doing on here. How cool is that? Apple honestly could bring back the touch bar by putting it on top of the function keys and it literally would be a solution that would make everyone happy and give some uniqueness back to the Mac. These things have absolutely great hardware but man are they just bland. They are so boring looking. They don't have anything different about them. But this begs the question, was this actually a video meant to show the repair of an M1 MacBook Pro? Or was this video just pro touch bar propaganda? Hmm, I wonder. And there we have it. That has been my repair of a $250 M1 MacBook Pro. My name is Frock for Dark. You can say that however you want. I really don't care. New videos whenever I like. Consider becoming a channel member like all these people on the screen have. You get some bonus videos, early access to my upcoming videos, custom Discord server roles, and your very own Minecraft server. All rolled into one. Starts a dollar a month. And that's about it. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.